Hello and welcome to another short data management video. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to get data out of a NetCDF file using XArray in Python. If you want to code along with me, you can. I'm going to put a link in the description to where you can download the data from. And I'm also going to put a link to a Jupyter notebook, which includes most of the code that we're going to go through together today. OK, let's jump right in. OK, so let's start working now in Python. I'm going to use Spider, but you can use whatever you uh, feel comfortable working with. The first thing we need to do is import the modules that we're going to work with today. So we can import XArray as XR. XArray is what we're going to use to manage our NetCDF files. And we're going to import pandas as PD. And that's going to allow us to create a data frame. And we're going to ultimately output that to um, either Excel or a CSV file, uh, which uh, many of you will feel more comfortable working with. Then we're going to open our data set into an object we're going to call data. So make that equal to xarray.open data set. And then we just have to input the file path of the data set we want to load. So I've input that there now. That should be the same data set that if you've been following along, you've downloaded from the link in the description. Let's print that as well to see how that looks. And we run the whole script. And we can see in the console on the right hand side how that looks. So let's have a look at that. The first thing we can see at the top is the number of dimensions that this file has. We see that there's a dimension called depth that has 168 points. That means that there's potentially 68 points here that have been sampled, it's 168 depths. This doesn't actually tell us about what any of the um, depths are. That's actually in the coordinate variable here that has the same name here. So this is telling us we have a depth variable that uses a dimension depth. We have a second dimension as well called enchar which is a number of characters, and this has a length of 36. So basically the dimensions tell you about the shape or size of the data set, and the coordinate tell you about exactly what values they are. If I scroll down a little bit, we can see our data variables. We have four data variables here, the chlorophyll A, the filtered volume, and the ferropigment all have a single dimension depth. And we have a fourth data variable, the event ID. And this has two dimensions, depth and nchar, the number of characters. So what this is basically telling us is that we have a single event ID for each depth. This event ID is just a string, but the length of that string is determined by this dimension here, nchar, so we know that each string can be 36 characters long. And if we scroll down, we also have a load of different attributes that we can see here. By default, in this uh, program, only 12 out of 38 attributes are printed. We'll show you how you can have a look at the rest of them later. But these are global attributes that describe the data set as a whole. So to print only the attributes and all of the attributes, we can append to this data.attrs. If I run that again, we'll see in the console, all of the um, attributes have been printed. Those of you who are familiar with working with Python uh, might see that this is um, basically a Python dictionary. So we have these uh, funny brackets here and uh, we have the key and value separated by a colon in each case. And each um, key is separated from the next using a comma. So with that in mind, we can use the same logic to access any individual key or and value from that data set. So if we want to access, for example, the creator name to see who the authors of the data set are, we can do that. And we can see it's Anne Nevada and Rita Amundsen in this case. So a big advantage of a NetCDF file is that it's self-describing. So it includes all the information that you should need to understand and use that file within it. And that includes all the metadata and the attributes that we've just looked at. 
And that's really useful so you don't have to carry along several different files with you, which of course poses a risk that you might lose one of them. But then how do we get at the data themselves? So we can remove this and instead we're going to print something different. Uh, let's print the data variables. So if I do again print data and this time I'm going to access a data variable, so data vers. I run that and we can see the four variables down in the console. If we then decide we want to look at just a single one of those variables, perhaps the chlorophyll A variable, we can do that. We can just remove this and put in square brackets chlorophyll A, which is the name of a variable in this case, and we can print that out. What we see is a range of values in a list with a lot of not and numbers here. Uh, that's because there's a lot of empty space essentially in this, uh, in this file. And then we have the coordinates that are associated with that variable and we have some of the variable attributes. So variable attributes um, describe the variable. So the units, um, a long name, which is a description in the data creator's words, a standard name, uh, which is taken from a CF standard names, which is a controlled vocabulary. Have a look at my earlier video introducing you to NetCDF for more about that. And the coverage content type, which tells you about what kind of um, data this is. So this is physical measurements. You can also plot the data in X-Array um, and we can show you how to do that. This is a very basic plotting functionality, but if you want a quick look, you can do, for example, xr.plot.scatter. And in this case, we're going to look at data, which is our object that we loaded here. And then we can put what we want on the x and the y axis, as we can see in the description that's popped up here. So on the x axis, I'm going to put chlorophyll a and on the y-axis I'm going to put depth. If I plot that and we can see at the top here in our plot pane a quick uh, view of the data. We can plot a line graph too. We can swap scatter for line. If we're doing this we first need to drop all the not and numbers from our data. So we can do that here. We can change uh, the object data to also write here chlorophyll A, which is a variable we're plotting, dot drop NA, and then in round brackets, depth. And I'm going to remove this next argument. I'll just make this a little bit smaller so we can see everything. And in this case, we can just write that we want uh, depth on the y-axis. Usually we would want um, increasing depth to uh, go uh, downwards. So we can do y increase equals false and run it again. And there we go. So now let's create a data frame out of these uh, data for this chlorophyll A variable. We can do that. We're going to call our object our data frame, df. We're going to say equals data chlorophyll A in square brackets. We're going to again drop the not a numbers because we don't need those. And we're going to just write at the end to data frame. And if we run that, and I will print the data frame as well so we can have a look at what comes out, we can see our data frame here. It has two columns, depth and chlorophyll A. Let's say we want to open another one of our data variables as well. I'm just going to have a look again what those data variables are called by writing this 
data.datavars in the console. Let's say we also want to access our filtered volume variable. Well, we can do that. Instead of um, just having this single variable listed here, chlorophyll A, we need to write a second variable here, filtered volume. But now because this is a list of variables, um, a list of strings and not a single one, we need to put this in double square brackets. And the reason for that is that the first square bracket says look for something within this data object and the second set of square brackets says this is a list. If I run that now, you can see our data frame here with our three columns. And of course you can make this list as long as you want if you want to load in more variables. So let's write this to Excel. We can do that by taking our data frame object with a dot and two Excel. And then within these round brackets, I'll remove this help. We just have to include the file path where we want to write the data. So if I call it something like chlorophyll a dot xlsx, and um, I'm sure you'll call it something a bit more descriptive. We can also write it out to CSV as well. Copy and paste this, and instead of to Excel, it's to CSV, and we'll probably also want to change the extension here. I run that, and I'll go and have a look at the data. And here are the data output raw from Python. I haven't done anything to this. We even have a bit of formatting with the index column and the headers um, formatted in bold for us. The values of our chlorophyll A here are quite small, so we might want to go back and uh, check what the units for that variable are. So we can do that by printing data chlorophyll A. And then we might want to do atras and units. And we can see here, I've also printed the data frame again. The units are kilograms per meter cubed, which is usually not the units that people are used to working with for chlorophyll A data, but it is the SI units. And this is perhaps the best practice for how to store the data. So you can go ahead and convert those data. It may be that your objective is to actually work with these data within Python and not to output your data to Excel at all. So how can we get one of these NetCDF variables to a variable within Python that we can work with? Well, one thing I normally like to do is to use NumPy to do this. Import NumPy as NP. And we can transform those data to a NumPy array. So if I call this chla array, go equals numpy dot array, and then just the name of the data variable that we've been working with, I'm just going to take this from here. I'm going to drop the NAs as well. I copy that into here, and let's print that out. I don't need to print this here again. let's run that script and you may see that I spelled this incorrectly so let's try that again and there we go we have our data as an umpire array ready to work with I hope you found this video useful and I hope you can see that loading data out of a NetCDF file into Python is not as complicated as some people perhaps think and you don't need to be an expert in Python in order to do this. If you did find this video useful, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these kind of videos where I can show you tutorials on how to access different types of NetCDF files and also how to create some NetCDF files for yourself. So thanks very much for listening. I'll see you next time.